<laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll work him in when he gets here. So hi, everybody. Welcome. What's that? Yeah. I, he, yeah, he was on another panel, and I guess it runs right up to this one. But that's okay. We'll, we'll make do with what we got so far. We'll get started. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Gamer X3. Yay. Yay. Uh, this is the third year of our podca podcast Cross Zone series. Uh, so thank you guys for being here, first off. I'm always afraid that these panels are going to be to an empty room. Uh, somewhere, so uh, it's really exciting to see you guys here. How many of you guys listen to podcasts? Yay! Awesome, awesome. Uh, how many of you guys make your own podcasts? That is fantastic. Awesome, awesome. We love podcast creators. Uh, we want to talk to you guys in a little bit. And that's what everybody here on this panel is. We are all podcast creators. Some of us have been doing this for a very long time. Some of us have been doing it for not so long of a time. Uh, but in our first year, our original podcast, Cross Zone, we actually talked about the reasons why you should podcast. Why do we do this? Uh, and if you missed it, it's available on YouTube. Um, but... Uh, in our second year, we talked about how do we do it, because a lot of people don't know some of the technical ends of things, you know, how do you get that? And that is also available on YouTube, if you need that. This year, we thought for our theme, we would talk about using your voice constructively. So we're going to uh, start off with some questions around that topic, and then if you guys have some questions, by all means, uh, on whatever, if it's uh, the topic or not, we're happy to answer whatever questions you guys might have, but if you if y'all are feeling shy, then we're podcasters. We like to talk an awful lot. Uh, my name is Rob Roberts, and I'm with a show called Orange Lounge Radio that's been on for, thank you, thank you, you think I paid you, uh, for about 13 and a half years, actually, how long we've been doing that. So actually, it kind of predates podcasting, so I'm um, kind of, I guess, the grandpa on the panel a little bit. But we're going to go down, let everybody introduce themselves, our, our diverse panel we have here, and tell us uh, your name and a little bit about your show real quick. The 30-second the pitch. Starting with who? Starting with you. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. we'll go down. The, we're going to go right, right on down the line. Um, I'm J uh, Jason Toops, and I'm with uh, Game Bar, G-A-Y-M-E-B-A-R. And uh, it's a comedy podcast about queer topics and games, essentially. Or, as John calls us, the uh, queer equivalent of the Prairie Home Companion. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mario Raul, and I am the co-host of La Palanca Podcast. La Palanca Podcast is a gay gaming podcast in Spanish, and you know we discuss everything from you know how stuff is from the Latin American perspective, I guess. Even though we both kind of move and we don't live in Latin America anymore, but anyway, um, yeah, pretty much lighthearted gay gaming boys dating stuff. Yeah. And what's really unique about you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but you and your co-host met at our first panel two years ago, right? It's like, technically, yes. We were both in the room present, and we were like, oh, I wish I could start a podcast with somebody about gay gaming in Spanish. But I guess nobody would do that with me. But then um, Slackic was like, um, you both pretty much tweeted the same thing, so you should get together and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I love Twitter for networking. It's the best. It's the best. So we did. We actually like That's Skyped, it. and we're like, so are we doing this? And we're like, sure. So it's been, what, like three years now, I think. Oh just hearing yeah. that, like, that's like validation for all of this. I love it. Thank you so much. Moving on. I'm Jamie, also known as Drug Tucker, and I am coming from Orange Lounge Radio with Bethany. For some reason, I don't know, I've put up with it for 13 and a half years or longer. Mm -hmm. Gameboy.org. Um, we are your twice monthly port of call for gaming news and views that maybe aren't on your radar, but most definitely should be. Um, what that means is we try to bring a gay gaming perspective on uh, some topics that maybe typically aren't covered, uh, import gaming and that sort of thing. And, you know, uh, it's something I'm very passionate about, very excited about, and I just want to say thank you all so much for coming here today. Yay. Awesome. And at some point, DJ Kirkland will be, oh, oh, look at that, just there in time. She is. Yes, yes, queen. Tardy to the ball. <laughs> she left her glass slipper on the way. So tell everybody who you are and what your podcast is. Hi, um, my name is DJ, and um, I do a podcast called Joystick Jockeys. And find it on Twitter at Joystick Jockeys or, joystick, or thejoystickjockeys.com. 
All right, so let's get into the questions. Uh, we're going to talk today again about using your voice constructively. So I wrote down some questions, and then about halfway through, we'll stop and see if you guys have any questions about anything, and we'll take some of those. So let's get into our first question. This is a two-parter, and this question is, how did you get those first few listeners to your show? That's the first part, because that's one of the biggest hurdles for any new podcaster. How did you get those first few listeners? So how did you get those listeners to your show? And then when was the moment that you realized somebody was listening to what you were doing? So uh, we'll start on that end, if, Captain Spike, if you don't mind going first. So, um, you know, I actually had a little bit of an in here in the form of you. I've been personal friends with you for more than 10 years. Uh, when I started the podcast, I was very fortunate to get retweets on Twitter uh, from you, spreading the word about our show. Um, and, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, the most important thing here, and this is something I learned as a kid watching Mystery Science Theater, the most important thing you can do in promoting your show is really just keep circulating the content, getting people just to listen. And if they're feeling you, they'll, they'll keep, you know, they'll come with you on this journey a little bit. Um, and, you know, I want to say, since I mentioned, you know, I had a little bit of a leg up in starting this, if any of you out there decide to start a podcast, you can tweet at me at SpikePoint over on Twitter. I would be happy to get word out on your show. I think we need more voices in this space, and I would love to hear what each and every one of you have to say about games from a gay perspective, like, beyond, like, there's just not enough voices out there. It's ridiculous. Um, the first time... I really noticed that, you know, people were out there, they were hearing us, they were on the other side and, and receptive to what we were talking about, even though we talk about games that, I mean, really, like, why is anybody talking about some of these Kuso gay games? It's like, people were reaching out to us on social media, like, oh, hey, because of your show, I played Choiniki for the first time. And it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I demand an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just, it's really meaningful, and it's, it's made me uh, more emotional and more passionate about games in general, so I definitely highly encourage all of you out there, if you're thinking about podcasting, um, you have valuable things to say, and I think you should put your voice out there. Do it! Do it! <laughs> Dark Soccer? But that gave us, you know, it's really just it's a community supporting each other. We started our show live. We decided that when podcasting was a thing, that we were going to do a little mini version of our show, which ended up we just now podcast the entire show anyway. But we had already been doing the live show. But it started off pretty small. I mean, we had our listeners in the teens the first show we did, which was still pretty big for a first-time live podcast. Um, so I was pretty excited. But I think the thing that cemented it for me some of our listeners are actually our friends now. You know, I meet people for games. I look at the pieces of who they were, you know, what they did. It, it means that every person listening is an individual. They have their own thing, and they all bring something unique to what we do. You know, it's for us, it's that interaction of people, how they talk to us and how we talk back to them. It's just like we're all hanging out, and that was the thing that really cemented it for me, that we were Doing the Lord's work. It's a <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Mario, how about you? Uh, for me, it was uh, kind of doing a little bit of research. At first, I thought there was not going to be an audience at all, um, especially because a lot of these podcasts started coming out, and more podcasts equals better to me, but a lot of them were in English. So um, my first thing was like, okay, well, how... When was the first time that I identify myself as a gamer, you know, the why, and then how do I go from there? Like, how would I find my own, basically, people? So there's, like, this one super old thread on GayGamer.net. It's called Aquí se habla español. And there's people that are talking Spanish from all over the world. So I would started, like, making... I used to go there, and I was just kind of lurking a little bit, making a post here and there. I started posting more often, kind of put my podcast in, like, the signature and make it, like, very obvious. Um, and then I started going to Twitter. I started, like, Googling a lot of, like forums that were in Spanish only, but a lot of them were like dead ends. Mm -hmm. So then I would go and follow those accounts on Twitter and then go and look at their followers and then just mass follow everybody. And then <laughs> you would get some follow backs and then I would just do kind of like um, 
I, at first, you know, I'm not being shady or anything, I didn't follow anybody on the panel because when I would follow somebody, um, Twitter would recommend me something and it would be everybody that was speaking in English. So I was like, I had to kind of mm. like stop following everybody so that the Twitter algorithm would suggest me people who were talking in Spanish so that I would follow them through them. So that's why you unfollowed me, because I just thought Sorry, you were being Rob. shady. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but then um, I think the first time was when there was like a bunch of like social media stuff and about ethics and games journalism. And I went on what? this like... Do not. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on like this super rant and I was like, nobody is going to listen and they probably aren't listening to my podcast. They probably don't know Spanish anyway. But somebody actually wrote me an email and was like, oh my God, you know, thank you, blah, 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 blah. And I was like... Oh, okay, cool, awesome, <laughs> yay! Somebody's out there. <laughs> um, Excellent. Yeah, that was me. That first email your show gets is always kind of like a little bit of like, oh, it's like a little warm hug. That's wow, people, somebody's out there. Tubesy, how about you? Um, I have to say, whenever we started podcasting, we had absolutely no idea what we were doing. It was just we tried to figure it out, and then we just started recording and putting shows out there. Um, so, when did we know that we were actually making an impact? I don't know. I think it was through Twitter. You know, I mean, if you're interested in podcasting, there is a community out there for you, so you just need to go find them wherever they may be. Um, we uh, went around Facebook for a while. We were promoting a lot on Facebook. But then we realized that our listeners were engaging us on Twitter, so then we sort of stopped doing Facebook, focused on Twitter, and then just, you know, put hashtags and things that we were talking about. Bayonetta, right? Like, you know, we got, we got followers from that. Um, so, yeah, just talk about, you know, if you're going to tweet about your show, be honest and talk about what you're talking about on the show, and then the listeners will come. Um, but also, don't be as numbers-driven, because, like, if you're doing something that's very niche, just the fact that you're doing it is important. It doesn't really matter how many followers you have. It's just that you're expressing your voice, and that's really important. Excellent, excellent advice, excellent advice. DJ, how about you? Um, I, I have a lot of the, the same sentiments as, um, as Tupsy about, about getting involved in podcasting and all that stuff. Um, I, I know for me, um, I kind of got my start, um, originally Joystick Jockeys wasn't even a podcast, it was a YouTube collab channel. So it was like basically me and like five other friends that I knew from Gay Gamer. Um, we all like befriended each other on Facebook and we would play games together. And then we're like, do you have a webcam? Like, do you have, like, video editing software? Great, let's make a collab channel. Back when this was, like, the early 2000s, mid-2000s, when, like, YouTube collab channels were really a thing. Um, so we basically did that, and then we all kind of went our separate ways for whatever reasons it were. And then I, I, I would, we had a Facebook community group for it, too. Right. And I got, I got a message, like, a year or so later, like, a year or so ago, and someone was like, I really liked, your, like, the YouTube thing that you guys did. I thought that was really awesome because... Looking all over the game industry, I see nobody that looks like me. Like, I, I, I don't see a brown person in sight that's, mm. that's podcasting or doing video content or anything like that. So that in and of itself was a huge driving force for me to want to do it. And what was cool was that I would get messages from people every now and again saying, like, oh, are you going to bring this back? Are you going to do this? And I ended up opting to do a podcast, and I had basically you as my... Um, as my mentor and shirt and my, my Sherpa. <laughs> so kind of like give me the rundown like what what apps do I need to get, what do I need to buy, um, and I'll and I'll do it because I wanna I wanna start doing this again. And we got that first I got that first email after like three or four shows and I got that first tweet that someone was like, Oh my god, like you and Ruben were talking about about butts, and then we thought that we, we both had the same sentiments about butts, and I'm like, oh, someone's listening to my conversation. I like about butts, butts too. I Who like knew? Those two. They're amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really that to that first tweet from someone else or that retweet from someone that was like, oh my God, I just discovered this podcast. I think it's really amazing. And then that, I don't care about the numbers, I just enjoy doing it. Yeah. Great. That's, and that's so important is that if you're going to get into podcasting for the numbers, um, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, get into it because it's something you want to do. For me, it's an excuse to hang out with my friends every Sunday night. And we've been doing it for a very long time. So, All right, let's get into the next question. The next question is, tell us about a moment that you realized your show had impacted somebody, no matter how big or small, even if it's a little thing, big thing, whatever you want to share with us, you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, Tupsy, I'll start with you. Um, okay, I I would have to say the first time that I felt that there was impact was um, 
at the Penny Arcade Expo. We spoke one year um, about what is a gamer. This is kind of when the discussions were starting um, to really sort of break through. And there was a ton of people in the audience. I was so surprised. I was shocked. Um, I didn't think anyone was going to be there. I thought we would be playing to tumbleweeds and crickets. And, <laughs> but there was people who came, and they were curious, and they were interested, and they asked us questions. And then we realized that they were coming to us for advice. They were coming to us for our opinions. And it was humbling, and it was, it was lovely. And I can't say that I was expecting that at all. Yeah. DJ, how about you? A moment that you realized you had an impact? Um, it was actually... Um, it was actually at Gamer Rex last year. Um, uh, somebody, no, it was actually at PAX the year that you and I both went. Right. Um, it was that year that we went to PAX. And um, I, we were just walking around my own business. I was like promoting their, promoting their panel. I'm like, y'all need to go to this panel. Oh my God. And then somebody came up to me and they were like, you, did you do that joystick jockey thing? I was like, yeah. Like, like when are you going to, are you guys going to bring it back? Are you guys going to do that or, or anything? And, I was like, oh, I, I hadn't thought about it because at the time we were all, like me and that group of people were all not on good terms at all. Um, so I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe never. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, was, it was cool that somebody that I had no idea who they were, someone a complete and total random, like saw me, remembered my face, walked up to me and like was like, when are you doing that again? And I'm like, I, I guess I should consider that. Well, and for better or for worse, YouTube's last forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As do I've podcasts. Had, as do podcasts. <laughs> I've definitely unlisted a couple of the videos. Cause <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Captain Spike, how about you? So I'm going to be cheesy as heck for a minute and say, you know, that the first moment I really felt like we had a positive impact was probably after the first podcast cross zone, uh, my co-host Slagkick. Um, people could totally clap for him. That'd be super cool. Yay. <laughs> Okay, stop. He's turning red, though. <laughs> so the thing is, he mentioned, you know, that he saw two people who were present for the panel who both wanted to do a, to do a Spanish-language podcast. And when I realized, you know, that our panel had had the impact to uh, bring in this, this hobby, to bring in this uh, communication, which, I, you know, is obviously very important to me, one of the, the favorite things I do in my personal time, um, it just, it was really meaningful to me that we had... You know, just by, by being open with everyone and talking about it, had encouraged people to do that. It was very meaningful, and thank you so much. I... <laughs> Shucks. I feel like you guys should hug. Um, maybe later. Dar Sakura, how about you? A moment you realized the show had impact? I can't really point out a particular moment. There, just in the emails that we would get and people asking for our opinion, um, that really has always driven it home. There was a case where I, when I used to run Pump Up the Volume, now that was a, a live show only, but it was sort of a spin off the podcast. And uh, I uh, got a message from somebody who told me they spent 50 bucks on iTunes with the, you know, to buy music that I had played live on air. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you now have good taste in music, so you're welcome. Um, there was that one time that we got the caller who wanted to thank you for being out and for being a positive role model out there. Def that was, like, if you were to ask me that question, that's definitely the story I'd share is I those, yeah, the emails that I get. Uh, I did also have um, a friend one time point out, because I had made some kind of off comment about something, you know, uh, it, it was me and me being annoyed at insert fandom here, um, which that always happens whenever someone's in a fandom. Um, but my friend saying, you know, uh, there are there's people who listen to your opinion on this one, so you know think of this, this, and this. And I was like, well, actually, I didn't think anybody cared what I thought, but you know, having it pointed out like that, you know, that's a very interesting perspective. Is that you might have had the impact where somebody you, you said something and realized maybe I didn't consider it the right way, and somebody changed your opinion. That's pretty pretty cool. Well, my opinion stayed the same. <laughs> <laughs> But um, well, but you I, saw it from another perspective. It, it was I think it was a situation that had to do with people modding romances and games mm. to change um, a, a particular orientation of romance mm -hmm. to something that it wasn't written to be. In this case, it was a gay romance to making it a straight romance. And I was like, no, you don't do that. You can't, you know. But but apparently, I had said 
phrased it kind of bluntly. Gotcha. Yeah. So. All right. Let me move on. Mario, how about you? Um, for me, it's not not as like lovey-dovey. But um, so one thing that I noticed, and it's kind of like a weird way, um, Ricardo and I, like during the course of this year, we used to publish like twice a month. We've kind of gone down to once a month. Um, like I moved you know, from one end of Texas to the other end of Texas, and he moved from Ecuador to Canada. So we didn't really have a lot of time, and it was kind of hard getting together and schedules and whatnot. So it was like one period of time where we hadn't published for like two months. And I was just trying to, you know, hey, whenever you get a chance, you know, I know that you're busy getting a job. I was trying busy getting a job. And then I got this tweet from this one guy, and, you know, he tweets on me in Spanish, and it's like, so what, you guys are done? Like, are you not going to do this anymore? Or, and I know that's <clears throat> not a very nice way of saying things, but what that told me is that somebody is expecting me. And that was very nice. Like, even though he didn't say it that way, what he meant is like, I kind of need you to publish something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah. So I was like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. This has been going on, but we'll have an episode right out. And even though it's not, you know, like flowers and rainbows, but that expectation that somebody is actually wanting um, to partake or uh, get some more of your work was awesome. That, you know, there's not a whole lot. I mean, part of the process of making a podcast in Spanish hasn't just been um, trying to distribute the same that I would if I were to make a podcast in English, but trying to see like what's available as far as like game development and gaming in Mexico and Ecuador and all these other countries. Um, and that's been very neat. And part of that is that need that somebody's saying like, where's the next episode? So that was nice. All right. Yeah. Let me get to the next question here. Have you ever had a change of heart or a change of opinion on a topic you discussed on a previous episode? And how did you handle that? I guess Dark Soccer, we kind of already heard a little bit of this for your answer. You didn't change, but have you ever had that happen where maybe you actually completely sure. changed? I mean, that should, that should be a normal occurrence that if you have an opinion, the more informed you are about it, your opinion should evolve. Um, that's just, you know, it, to stubbornly hold on to something even when you have evidence to the contrary, it's kind of like what five-year-olds do. So I'm always happy to, to be corrected or being given more information about a particular topic because if it means that I'm going to be, number one, more knowledgeable about the topic and number two, have a better impact in something related to that, then sure, I'll change my opinion if I have to. That's being human, so... Mario, how about you? Have you ever had a change of opinion on a topic, and how did you handle that? <clears throat> yeah, um, one, one of the times, most of the time, Ricardo and I agree on a lot of topics, so sometimes that could, like, post a little bit of a barrier in a podcast, because we're like, yeah, 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 so that doesn't make good radio. But one of the things <clears throat> that did end up happening one time was um, we were discussing about, like, channels of distribution. Like, here, when you live in the U.S., you don't think much about it. Like, you either purchase digitally or you'll just go to Walmart or whatever. That's not the case in Latin America. It is getting better. Um, um, I grew up in Mexico, so back in the day, there was, like, a lot of, like, things that you had to do to get games. And I was like, oh, Ecuador is probably not that bad. But then Ricardo was like, no, actually, let me tell you. So then he started telling me this saga of, like, how, like, used games of, like, there's, like, a PS2 that's being sold in some store for, like, a ridiculous amount of dollars and, like, how gamers get, like, you know, basically effed over. Like, a lot of times that I was like, oh, I was not aware of this. Sorry. Like, you know, to judge Latin America just based on my soul experiences was wrong. And that was very enlightening. And then we started getting, like, into, like, well, how is it in this country versus this country and, you know, stuff like that. So that was very interesting. Excellent, excellent story. Um, how about you, Tupsy? Have you ever had changed your opinion? Yes. How would you handle it? <laughs> a lot. Um, <laughs> no, I think, uh, well, so, so our show is explicit. We just put an explicit label on every single one of them. Uh, the reason is is that regardless of the content, like, we're not, we don't have sponsorships, so we don't have to worry about pissing off Casper Mattress or Audible.com <laughs> or, like, any other place, right? So it doesn't matter, you know, like, um, so we're not tied to anybody, so we can say whatever we want, and we take that into consideration. So... 
our opinions can be incendiary, but also through the nature of conversation, we grow and evolve over time, right? I think I've become more accountable for doing the show. Also about um, my voice, you know, and what I say can impact others. So we always are conscious whenever we're recording the show that we're doing it for an audience and we're, and, and we're expecting people to listen to it. You know, it's not just a conversation. When people say that, like, oh, you podcast, like, you're just hanging out with your friends. Well, yes, but, I mean, it's constructed for people to listen to, you know. So, yeah, I could say, yes, I've had many changes of heart. <laughs> I mean, sometimes apologies are necessary. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that makes you any less. I think that makes you a stronger person. Admitting that you're wrong or admitting that you have changed your mind or your, your opinion has evolved is mature. Yeah. Have you, ever had, have you ever had listeners tell you, I'm here for the F-ups? Because I've had that. Like, especially being live, we F-up all the time. Well, that's why we, we include edit. them. They're called the behind-the-bar <laughs> sequences. <laughs> so, we we uh, take uh, the warm-up patter from before the show actually starts and then put it at the end of the show and we call it behind the bar. Yeah. So, yeah, we include that just because it's fun. And I, I, honestly, that's that's what some people like live for. And I think because it shows that human side, you know, yeah. that nobody's perfect. Well, I mean, we get asked about many personal questions. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> well. Dinner, which we are fine to share, too. He'll be back after dark to share some of those. <laughs> DJ, how about you? Have you ever changed your opinion? Yes, I have. No, <laughs> ne no never. I'm right, about, I'm right about everything. No one can tell me anything different. Um, no, but, but in all seriousness, I have. Um, I know that even in the 10 episodes that we've done of the Joystick Jockeys podcast with my co-host Ruben and I, um, he, like, him and I played, like, we played very similar games, and then we played completely different games. Like, he's really big into, like, space shoot mans and, like, Destinies and Halo and all that stuff, and I could give two shits about those games. And I'm like, oh, I want to play this, this random-ass anime game and this other stupid fighting game or this fashion game on the 3DS. And we're, like, we, we have very similar interests, which is why we came together in the first place. And we were talking about... Destiny, and I was like, oh, Destiny's this and that, blah, 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 it's kind of boring, whatever, blah, and Ruben is very passionate about it and loves the game, and we usually talk about it at least once a little bit per episode, because we always ask, what are you playing? And it's all, he's always playing Destiny, as I'm always playing Smash Brothers. Um, so we have these conversations, and as I listen to Ruben more talking about the game, and some of our mutual friends that we talk, that we talk about the show about um, on Twitter, and then Mutuals will jump in the conversation and talk about their experience with it as well. Um, I've changed my mind about how I felt about the game. I didn't. I was like, well, this is neat when you're playing with friends, but beyond that, I could really care less. Um, but it's actually a really fun and engrossing experience. I think that they, that they just recently added basically what I think is um, Jet Moto or something to uh, wipe out to Destiny or something, which that already cap captures my interest immediately. So it's like, yeah, it makes me want to boot up that game again. Uh, otherwise, on a game that I probably would never play again. Um, so I've changed my opinions about that before in the past, but uh, yeah, I think be, it's all part. It's all about being accountable and being and being a human and knowing that you will make mistakes and you can make mistakes and then you can change your opinion on something, and you might get called out about it at some point in time. But I think acknowledging that and taking ownership is is best. It is interesting too, and you bring up this point that we live in a day and age now where games can change like that, and you almost have to give some games a second look yeah. because they're not the same as they were. I remember Absolutely. Diablo Three was the first big one that kind of had this, so it's kind of interesting that some games are really, really worth a second look. Yeah. Or like me and WoW. Well, sure. World of Warcraft <laughs> evolves every expansion. A lot of MMOs, yeah. you know, uh, of Final Fantasy fourteen. Hello, did anybody play one point of Final Fantasy fourteen? Yeah, good reason. All right, <laughs> but the new one's great. The new one's great. Don't be mad. Don't ban me, Square Enix. Don't ban me. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, Captain Spike, have you ever had an opinion? Well, actually, this uh, kind of will be least. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Have you ever had an opinion? Have you ever changed your mind on an opinion? Had an opinion change? Rude. <laughs> so, DJ actually answered very similar to what I had prepared, uh, but I want to expand a little bit on that because when we started the show, you know, our whole tag is that we are all about games that aren't on your radar. I was very, like, anti-AAA, anti, like, big box experience. I used to always poop on, like, Halo and what have you. And, you know, some of our listeners had reached out over the years, like, you know, based on your interest in sci-fi, based on how you feel about, you know, like, momentum in games and, and mechanics, you may actually enjoy some of these things if you play them. And, you know, I sort of put myself out there. If you listen to the show, you probably know, you know, I play Destiny literally every day. And uh, I've played all of the Halo games now. And it, it turns out that by opening my mind, I was really able to 
um, you know, enjoy some things I really thought I wasn't going to enjoy, and I think it has made for a better show. It's certainly made for me to enjoy the hobby even more. It's just been completely positive to have an open mind about not just what I'm talking about, but also just what I'm willing to play overall. So, right. Excellent. How long do we get here? Do we get till 45 after, or do I get to go right up to the hour, or what? Ten minutes tell. Okay. Uh, let me do one more question. I'm going to open it for audience questions if you guys have anything. So, okay, here we go. Without being shady, so no naming names, <laughs> have you ever heard anything on another broadcast or podcast that made you say, I want to make sure we don't do that on our show? Why? <laughs> so no naming names, although Captain Spike is like, me, 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 me. So go ahead. Okay, the reason I want to answer this is because I am going to name names, but the show... <laughs> Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold yeah. on. Without, Jackpot. don't be shady. No. You see Jets that? Just be us. Give me a chance. All right, I'll give you a chance. The show I listen to and that I want to throw under the bus is my own show. We actually had a segment in our first 20 episodes or so that was very negative. Um, we were working on calling out articles that we didn't agree with, um, talking about why we felt that these articles in games media were deficient, and um, ultimately, upon reflecting, you know, I want to be a positive voice. I want to have a constructive voice. It's why we're here. Um, I thought, you know, instead of doing this, instead of reinforcing the negative, instead of adding this negativity to the conversation, let's instead call out articles we love. Let's look at, at exposés. Kotaku is a great example because they've actually done some really great investigative pieces recently um, where we want to spread these links and talk about, you know, there's value in this kind of reporting. And, you know, let the negative stuff, the stuff that doesn't click for us, just let it go because there's really no need for us to be those kinds of voices in this space. There are already enough of those kinds of voices in this space. All right. Okay, fair enough. You, you turn that around. I, you changed my opinion. It happens. <laughs> All right. It can happen. All right. Uh, Dar Sakra, how about you? Well, for one thing, I don't want to be one of those ones that uh, puts down other independent podcasts, which we've heard happen in other shows before. Um, that's just, number one, immature, and number two, it's sort of like trying to be promoting at the expense of somebody else, and I don't really want to do that at all. And then the other thing is um, letting your sponsorships guide your opinion and I'll leave it at that fair enough and I think that especially the first part of what you said where as indie podcasters we have to stick together and support each other so when yeah, that's one of my biggest pet peeves too when I hear indie podcasters bagging on each other I'm like I'm not here for that and unsubscribe no that's, that's the quickest way to get me to unsubscribe to your show for sure Mario, how about you? Have you ever heard anything on another show without naming names? Um, yeah, I mean, there's. I want to compare two, basically. Uh, one of the first, I think, I guess, um, around the time YouTube started to become very prominent, um, there's still a website, you know, GameTrailers.com, and there is a guy that kind of rose to prominence. His name is, is uh, I think, Angry Video Game Nerd. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, wait, no <laughs> shade. <laughs> but... Um, as, as, you know, yes, he's angry, and yes, he's trying to, like, put all this emotion behind it, but at, what I could appreciate from that is that he would at least show visually what he's talking about. So it's not a bad thing to have an emotional reaction about something that you care about, and if it's video games that you care about, that's okay. Unfortunately, I think that formula has been copied way too many times, especially on YouTube, and I think that it's just, like, senseless anger. Like, I am angry, and I am going to be loud, and I don't even have a reason to be loud, but I'm going to give you this tone because it entices you. You know, subscribe. And it's like... That's not, I, I, I'm not opposed to being negative. I'm not opposed to um, being passionate about things in gaming that I care about and showing that my critiques reflects that. But I think you, you can't just be an anger machine. And that's what, you, and sometimes, don't get me wrong, especially if you're talking about like representation or issues in gaming, um, whether it's like race or sexuality or gender. And if you go out and look for those things to make you angry, you will find them. So it's like, so part of it is like holding yourself back a little bit to be able to still enjoy games while still providing very pointed critiques about what you want to change and not bully others. 
uh, with your critiques, even though you could easily do that. It's like such a fine line sometimes. Um, so trying to do that, and I edit the crap out of my shows too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, you gotta take a sentence or two out of there, so. All right, fair enough. Tipsy, how about you? Um, let's see, this is tough. Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, when it comes to podcasting, if somebody's opinion doesn't jive with your own, I think it's valuable to listen to it, but also, like, judging another podcast because of the content of their show, if it's not to your liking, then it's just not to your liking. Like, swipe left and move on. You know, it's for somebody else. Um, but I want to take a more sort of like pragmatic approach to if you are going to podcast, take pride in the recording process and buy microphones. Because if you don't and you're recording from a laptop, the medium that you've chosen is audio only. This is what you're subjecting your listeners to. Tinny audio coming from a laptop, that sounds terrible, right? So... If there is any one bit of advice that I have to anyone who's interested in podcasting, buy microphones. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, DJ, has there ever been something you heard you were like, nope? Yeah. Um, it's primarily coming from like the, the YouTube space and kind of more to your point about, about your, your whole, whole persona being dictated by anger. Um, I think that being angry takes so much and unnecessary en energy and it's it's it just it's never been me i'm i try to be a really positive person at all times a really positive or sometimes shady person at times but uh, but uh, <laughs> but um, but i mean w but with that in mind um i try to always um position our show into a positive spin and even when we did video content we were doing video reviews we never gave it us we didn't we never did a review system of like one to ten or three out of five or whatever it was like we kind of went based on upvotes from the video it's like if you like the video then maybe you're possibly interested in the game you should probably probably check it out um we've never tried to have that kind of an approach when it came to that stuff but um yeah just like i like the negative like the so much negativity that, that i see presented in the game space is i hate that it, it seems like to me that that voice of anger and hatred is so loud it's so loud and I see it everywhere, like angry video gamer 57 and then angry and angry black video gamer 57 over there and then angry whatever video gamer over there. It's like that same format has been copied. It's copied and done over and over and over again. It's, Aren't video games supposed to be fun? They're fun, you're right. <laughs> video games are fun and like, like fun elicits happy and happy, like, happy show and... All that oh, stuff. And you're just talking about one of my pet peeves right now. I'm sorry, but the no, video game nerd, I just have to throw something in. Go ahead. The reason why I'm frustrated with him is that he, it is obvious that he's portraying a caricature right. of a gamer of her, type. Of a person. Right. right. But I don't think his comedy in that caricature elevates it to the point where it's actually funny. Zero punctuation, very funny. Yeah. Very, very funny. It's well written. It's well done. Wow. He is just yelling at the camera with the angry video game nerd ticket. Yeah, I, I, can't, like, I, I, can't, I can't, I can't do it. Like, if you're, if you're yelling at me, like, I don't want to listen to your show. Like, everything you're saying to me, I'm like, I can't. Jamie, you have a thought? I will posit that the angry video game nerd game is really fun, if frustrating. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Mr. Bucket episode was hilarious. All right. All right. Uh, well, I want to open it up. Does anybody out there have a question for our panelists? Anybody out there? Hands? Anyone? Anyone? All right, don't be shy. Yay, we got some. All right, let's start over here. Hey, what's your name? Hi, Garrett. Are you a listener or producer? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. What's your question? Um, so what advice would you all have for uh, podcast creators who, um, like, they, you know, like, they get their podcast out there but are trying to find more ways to engage their audience, like bring in more listeners? Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Twitter for sure. And Twitter. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, and Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> more Twitter. Um, what we are starting to do as well for more like user engagement is um, we've created a Twitch channel for our podcast. So we um, so like me and Ruben were like, oh well we'll play we'll play Smash Brothers because like I'm really good at it and he's really bad. So like we can do that and then we can have uh, listeners come in and play with us or whatever that looks like. Um, so just any way that you can make it more interactive um, with your audience, I think kind of makes it more makes a more personal experience. So maybe integrating Twitch as well I think would be a good idea. I and think, I think we do a gaming podcast though. Uh, but incorporate it into your personal brand. Yeah. Right? Like own it as part of your work experience. Right. right? As opposed to it being something else. Jamie and Spike I have found that incorporating some of your extracurricular activities 
into sort of like an advertising for your podcast. Like I, like when I streamed Hot Tooful Boyfriend, I would end every, you know, stream with a link back to the podcast. I would put it on my uh, Tumblr, uh, massaffecting.tumblr.com. Um, I, I would go. I would always link to the show um, for just my Mass Effect blog. For my little fandoms, I'd say, hey, we're all big nerds, come listen here. I would always make it, well, when I was a moderator on DDR Freak, my signature was OLR. So, I mean, you can always, you know, if you're on a forum, add in a blurb if they let you have a link. You know, someone will go, oh, what's that thing? Click. Spike, one more thought before we move on. So, um, you know, I want to build on what Jamie was saying. I think one of the most important things you can do is engaging on multiple planes, uh, you know, I do a show about games, so I had Slag Kick play PT on Halloween night. Some of you I actually Ooh. saw in the Twitch chat, so hi. Um, but for your show, your show specifically is about wrestling, as I recall. Um, you know, I would say start live tweeting some of the pay-per-view events. You know, start really engaging. Um, if you can do a live stream, stream it on, on YouTube, and, you know, you could all talk about the show while taking uh, listener feedback and responding to it in real time. Uh, that's what I, you know, those are the kinds of activities that I think get people more interested and take them to the next level of engagement. You could also stand a John Cena meme. <laughs> uh, that, that ship may have sailed. I don't know. But then again, some memes seem to last forever. Who knows? Anybody else with a question? Oh, good. Right here. Very convenient. What's your name? Todd. Hey, Todd. What's your question? Hey, girls. Hey. Uh, I want to reinforce, by the way, the include your extracurriculars because Game Bar lives and dies on come for the game, stay for the discussion of how many people constitutes an orgy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was last show, by the way. Yeah. Was, <laughs> find us on stage. <laughs> right. um, no, this actual question is about content, and it is, it is very much about throwing shade at our own show, so sorry, Tubes. Yeah, um, no, it's fine. Go but it. if we have any more weeks where it's like, what'd you play, Tubes? Dark Soul. What'd you play, Todd? FF14. What'd you play, Jeremiah Picross? Great. Thanks for listening, and the show <laughs> over in five minutes like we had such a terrible time this summer with the just the drought of stuff that came out and um i know at least just speaking for the three of us host wise yeah. tubes and jeremiah play more indie games than i do i tend to be i'm a triple a kind of girl sorry um <laughs> so what suggestions do you have for like because those are the shows, at least for us, on Game Bar, it tends to be like, we talk about games for 10 minutes, but we have not played anything new since 1944, and yeah. we need to fill time. And that is, in fact, when the discussions happen about things like how many people constitutes an orgy or stuff like that. It, it's five. The it's, answer is five. It's five. In, in we came, we came to that by... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, came, we came to that by science. Um, <laughs> but the real question is, how do you... How do you feel? I guess this is maybe more relevant for people who are doing games content, um, since especially like for wrestling, for example, that's evergreen. You're always going to have stuff to talk about. Um, but how, how do you feel those? How do you feel those weeks? And I wonder if maybe we're particularly vulnerable to that because we do weekly shows and we're not news based. Yeah, ba barely. It's like we true. may we mention. Don't, we don't read. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, we, we we mention some articles, but we're not like hot topic news ready. You know, I'd actually like to share with you what I sort of did over the summer for that exact reason. Um, you know, what Slykick and I started doing was digging up some older games and playing uh, games that came out, you know, 10 years before we were podcasting, stuff that, you know, to us is so ingrained that we would never think to bring it up in our day-to-day -day podcast. Um, that way, you know, we're starting to, to bring up these things that are sort of, to us, foundational. We have a lot of things to say about these games, and we actually had some really fruitful conversations come up springing out of things that would never have occurred to us to talk about on air because they were, again, foundational. And, and that's my thought on, on that sort of situation. To add to that, you were making me think of that we have segments in our show that are determined, you know, they're now part of things and we have to have something to fill those segments. Like when I do classic game, that's what you're making me think of. Um, and that started off as the classic website, or not classic website, but best website, on, mm -hmm. on the internet, and then moved on to classic games. But we have those dedicated segments now that if we need something to fill space or we need something to remove space, we can control the length of those so that we give a consistent time frame with the show, too. I'm going to be a bad moderator and jump in with my own answer, too, just because I can't resist. But um, I think, too, if you're getting bored with the whole what did you play this week format, which is very, very popular in gaming podcasts, see what happens if you remove it for a week. Like, what would happen if you lost that segment altogether? If that's going to destroy your show, 
you might want to think about what is the structure kind of around that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you might want to kind of reevaluate what else is there to talk about and that sort of thing. So oh. that's, that's m m part of my advice. The other advice is, you know, the more work you put into something, the better product you're going to get. So you kind of have to force yourself, I think, out of that bubble a little bit. And uh, believe me, I get sucked into MMOs. I spend all my waking hours some weeks playing Final Fantasy XIV, the new one. Um, that, uh, that it's hard to get around to other stuff. But, and if cost is an issue, there's a giant library in Steam of free games. And there's indie people out there that are like, please play my game and talk about it. And all you have to do is ask. And you, you get a lot out of that. So if it's, if, if you want to kind of mix it up for that, if you're like, no, but my whole show is like what we've been playing, you can kind of mix up with trying to interject maybe for more free stuff and just trying to reach out to indie people that I'm sure would love to have any additional exposure they can for their product. Um, a really quick one I want to yeah. add. Um, we do something similar, but it's a little bit different. So we have like basically four parts to the show, right? And then there's within those parts, there's like, I guess, modular sections. So within any particular podcast, so we have like an intro section that might consist of like, what have we been playing or how are you adjusting to life in Canada or, you know, Ricardo's dating life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then se middle section, again, there's another like three modular pieces and then, you know, the meat of the program and then the another three modular potential topics. And then we always close mostly the same. So that gives you plenty of configurations within your own show. That tends to keep it a little bit. I also have like a, like my little cheat sheets of, of stuff that I would like to talk about. So if at all we're like really like tired, we're dead, we don't know what we're going to talk about, I just pull up the list and be like, okay, that, that sure it's going to be, you know, something we could talk about. So instead of having like a rigid structure, I mean, I mean, have a beginning and an end as far as like how you open and close your podcast, but you can, you know, shuffle the pieces and sometimes that keeps things interesting. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Well, I see a question way in the back, and I'm going to try to get over here, too. We just have a few more minutes. So, hi, how you doing? What's your name? Uh, I'm Eric. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Oh, the camera's even following me. I was going to apologize. Hi. Uh, question for our panelists. Yeah, um, so I came in late, so I apologize if this is a repeat of something you said earlier, but uh, I'm a podcast creator, and I'm sort of curious if you have opinions about SoundCloud versus I, um, iTunes hosting versus just do it yourself. Uh, like, where do you get most of your listeners from? Do they use one platform or another? Uh, we're having trouble. <laughs> Anybody? We started for iTunes, didn't we? Uh, well, iTunes, actually, no, because we predated iTunes. So you used to have a iPodder, I think was the name of the podcasting that, software you had. That's right. It's changed a little bit. But I honestly think that the more you get them out on anyway, the better. So it doesn't matter. I think the cumulative number is what matters. So, I mean, if you're looking at numbers, so. But also getting an RSS feed for your podcast is really important because from that RSS feed, then you can submit it to iTunes, Stitcher, and various platforms. So that sort of takes care of the middleman for you. I say put it on blast. Put it everywhere you possibly can. <laughs> no, really. I mean, I've had people that have said, I got tuned into your show through Zoom podcast. And I was like, that's still a thing. But apparently it is. So d I say put it out there everywhere, everywhere you possibly can. So, all right, thank you. Let me get to the question over here. I'm getting my exercise today. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm Matt. Uh, so I'm curious what you guys have learned about uh, the chemistry of the um, hosts that you have. Like, are there certain functions that some hosts serve in the conversation? I'm an obnoxious bitch. <laughs> no, she's not. Me too. No wonder we get along so well. Um, it's interesting because Ricardo and I have like different backgrounds. Like I was going to like, yeah, I'm going to join the games industry. And then I was just like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing one. <laughs> and Ricardo's like, yeah, I'm going to join the games industry. And he did. So sometimes he's kind of, there's like this, I guess, balance, because he's trying to be, like, polite, and he's got a job in the games industry. And I'm just like, nope, we're talking about this. They're very controver sorry, controversial topics. So there's, like, this, I guess, it's, it's, you'll, it's, uh, it's hard to explain. You'll know, like, 
once you're talking with the people that you're making your podcast, like to what role they kind of um, fall. It's kind of fun because you also kind of get to press their buttons a little bit. <laughs> um, but it's something that needs to evolve naturally. What I did was I made a beta episode to find out how we complement each other. That never got released. That is like on the back burner, like, you know, the special edition, you know, if we Deep ever cut. need. Yeah, Inside. exactly. Yes. The and, you know, don't just do one, you know, do an alpha, a beta, whatever you need to find out how you're going to, you know, talk with each other instead of talk around each other. Um, so that's important. So as far as, again, I am can be perceived as aggressive and um, Ricardo maybe not as much. Um, but again, he's got a lot more to lose than I do, I guess, is the perception. Um, but it makes for an interesting type of show. Okay. Uh, uh, Spike, one more, one more thought on this? Um, maybe Tubesy real quick. Okay. Well, so Slykick, um, sorry to put you on blast again. <laughs> he comes from a different gaming background than I do. You know, I've been doing the import stuff, reading all the game mags since I was a, a small kid. Uh, he was, was enthusiastic but didn't have the experience, and he's actually a big part of why I picked him um, as the person to work with on this project, because I knew that he would bring a, a perspective I didn't have, and I would bring a perspective that he didn't have, and as such, we would be able to serve more of our listeners with these different perspectives. But the main reason why, you know, we are doing our 100th episode later this month, and the main reason why we've... The main You're reason old. <laughs> the main reason why we've gone so long is because I genuinely enjoy talking to him. And so that, to me, is, is the core component. I don't think people are going to want to listen to your show if, if the people who are talking aren't people who enjoy talking to each other. You're going to run out of steam. You're going to be somewhat unpleasant to listen to. Uh, I just, to me, when you say what kind of chemistry um, do you need, like how do you get it, I can't answer that per se other than to say talk to someone on air that you enjoy talking to, and from there, everything will flow. You'll work out a way to, to do a show if you're really enjoying talking to each other. All right, Tubesy, real quick okay. thought, and then we got to wrap up. We're Chemistry over. is key. Have somebody that you gel with. Uh, if you have a topic that you want to podcast about, if you have somebody in your life that you talk on the phone with a lot about this topic, chances are you've got your podcast host right there. Done. Excellent. Uh, Thank you guys so much for being here at this panel today. I really appreciate it. I do want to go down. I like to always end OLR by asking everybody, what's your final thought? So quickly from our panelists, like 10 seconds or less, your final thought on uh, podcasting and, and what's to come for Podcast X4, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we hope. Uh, <laughs> Spike, I'll start with you. Um, oh, man, I'm going to get super cheesy again. Um, I don't know about pod, uh, Podcast Cross Zone 4, but... I will say podcasting is one of my favorite things to do in the world. I have met so many amazing, beautiful people through it. I am so pleased to see all of you here today. I'm so happy that GamerX is a thing that exists and that they let us come here and talk to you all today. I hope, hope, hope to engage with many more, many of you and many more of you in the future. And I really hope you all consider adding your voices to this conversation. Dark Sakura? Um, I'll add my cheese ball factor. Believe in yourself and be the best version of yourself. Um, you can't go wrong. You'll find the people who will work well with you. Also, everyone in this room should play the Guardian Legend because it's the best game ever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's so appropriate you're sitting next to a unicorn when you're talking about that. Anyway, I'm just, all right. Mario, how about you? Your final thought? Yeah, in the same vein, don't underestimate yourself. Um, if you want to start podcasting, my first advice would be just do it. You don't have to release it, but just get in front of a mic and start talking and record yourself. And you might hate it because I think everybody hates the first time they listen to their voice coming out of the speakers, but just keep doing it. Again, you don't have to release it, but um, find somebody then to do it with and just keep going. Tipsy? Um I say keep a consistent and manageable schedule if you plan on podcasting. Don't try to record too much early on and burn yourself out. I've seen it happen time and time again. Last but certainly not least, DJ? Um, be yourself. Um, you, have a, you have a voice and a perspective that, that nobody else has. Um, everybody is uniquely different, so I think it's valuable to share what your thoughts are on, on particular things. Find someone that, again, that you gel with that is easy for you. I found Ruben because him and I were both playing Splatoon, and I think he's really, really hot. And, <laughs> and I, that, yeah, that helps too. So I flirt with him on every he show is. if you listen to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, we just we just gelled by playing Splatoon together. We're like, we should do a show, and then we said, yeah. So um, the chemistry comes naturally. Um, if it's forced, it's not going to work. 
and you're just going to burn yourself out. So just let it let it flow naturally, and I think you'll be better served for it. All right. Thank you guys for your support of podcasting. Thank you for being here. Thank you, GamerX. We'll see you next time. <laughs>